as we're moving into this future, you can also, just one example here, see what's happening with meat, right? The idea of uh, meat replacement. Right? You can see in this chart here, conventional meat will shrink in 2040, and vegan meat replacement, you know, tofu burgers and insect burgers and stuff like that, right? And cultured meat is coming. I know you find it maybe kind of weird. I tasted it the other day. It's actually not that bad. Here's a shot of it. This is the Memphis uh, burger. Memphis meats, it's uh, basically chicken from a cell that's cultivated in the lab. So it's no dead animals, but it is from animals. So it's not vegetarian in that sense. But you know, I kind of have the hunch that, that the future is vegetarian, uh, regardless of how you look at it. But this is all going to contribute to the possibility of creating a green future and creating a new market. Uh, we're not going to get quite as far as this scene here from Star Trek showed and I love this one because it's uh, yeah it's a little bit off the wall at the, for the time being. One pan fried catfish. Yeah the pan fried catfish isn't going to be here anytime soon like this but now we have technology that can literally make meat. Right? Bill Gates and Richard Branson have invested. And that's just one of the pieces of all of these explanations why I think the big green is now possible as well as kind of inevitable. Uh, and yeah, it's a, it's a painful process to make all those switches. You know, I was just in Dubai and before that in Saudi Arabia six weeks ago, of course, for those countries, phenomenal shift. But I think they're going to get around the bend by investing into technology and healthcare and, and education and of course green technology as well. So as we're moving into this future, there's four revolutions. Agricultural revolution, roughly a thousand year, years. Industrial revolution was roughly a hundred years. The digital revolution, roughly 25 years. And now we have the sustainability revolution. That is roughly 10 years. So the revolutions are happening quicker and quicker and quicker because they're exponential, the industries are converging, and the outcome is combinatorial. So I really think that the, you know, the next 10, 20 years to switch to a whole sustainable lifestyle pretty much across the board is entirely possible. And we will have to suffer from the two degrees warming, but going back, we can probably have technology in 20 years that will help us alleviate it or even reduce it again and sort of replenish the, the planet. And also this chart shows you, for example, the race to build a commercial fusion reactor. Uh, that also means we're going to have unlimited energy by having fusion nuclear. I know many people don't really like nuclear energy, but I think it's just part of the package now. And nuclear fusion will be the ticket to sort of abundant energy. Think of uh, abundant energy like abundant music with Spotify, you know, just everywhere. Uh, once we have that, you know, maybe 10, 15 years, some people would say, mind-boggling opportunity. Also, of course, artificial intelligence. So this slide shows it pretty well. Uh, uh, enterprise artificial intelligence, right? That's what we need for, a, for climate change. We need to make sure that we can use AI for intelligence switching, for pollution uh, prevention, for monitoring. Uh, we shouldn't use AI to, in the end, monitor everybody all the time, but this is going to be a big deal using technology to fight pollution, not just in less carbon or carbon offsetting or sequestration, but also, of course, in preventing the, the production of carbon in the first place by just being more efficient. Yeah.